It's the year 1919. It's the 24th of February, and the time is 9 a.m. in the morning. J.R.R. Tolkien had a plan and a schedule for that day. I don't know what it was, but he definitely did have a plan and a schedule for that day. That fact kind of brings me back down to earth. It makes me realize that he was just a normal man, like I'm a normal man, and that on that date, he was 27. Just like on this date, I am 27. He had a plan for his day. He had 24 hours in his day. Just like I have a plan for my day and 24 hours in my day. Except that he wrote one of the greatest novels of all time. It leads me to think, like, how did he fit it all in? How did he do it? How did he balance his normal life? How did he balance his writing? He must have had a pretty good daily routine. It got me thinking that maybe I should create my own daily routine using ideas from other people that I look up to. This will be created to boost my productivity and to get as much done as I can during the span of a day, but to also be fit and healthy and to include specific time for my friends and family. By doing this, I hope that I can look back at every single day and think, wow, I've actually achieved something, but also to not feel burnt out by actually managing my time properly. Now, the trick here is to create a routine that you actually enjoy not to make a routine where you punish yourself. Make sure it's flexible and schedule things in that you know you can enjoy and look forward to. So here is the daily routine. In the morning, I will read my Bible for 15 minutes. Some people meditate here, but for me, reading the word connects me with God, which is very important to me. Now this section of my daily routine is definitely inspired by Tolkien and C.S. Lewis, who both did this themselves. Coffee in bed with my wife for 10 minutes and stretching for five minutes, followed by a run, or a cycle, or a swim, or a surf, a shower, and then get ready. Doing exercise and stretching first thing was inspired by David Goggins and Nick Bear. This is then followed by work, so the first thing I'll do when I get to work is answer my emails. This is definitely inspired by Elon Musk, who, as soon as he wakes up, answers his emails. So, if you look at it in kind of a normal person's perspective, the first thing he does when he gets to work is answer his emails. So, I'm gonna take that approach. After this is followed by regular work, which for me is like editing or filmmaking. This is followed by a short break. There are quite a few breaks in my routine, and this is inspired by Jordan Peterson and Winston Churchill, who took regular breaks throughout the day, and this is supposed to help you with productivity and to maximize your effort and ability during the day. This will help you get things done and get things done quicker just by being able to take a regular five minute break. Then it's time for lunch. Then after lunch, I'll either work on a passion project or do something a bit more creative. The reason why I put it after lunch is because my brain doesn't tend to work that well after food. So I put the more enjoyable, exciting stuff after lunch and it's something that I'm particularly passionate about that doesn't require a lot of brain power. I either do that or I schedule a call. Talking to people will keep me on my feet and keep me alert. So I usually schedule meetings for this time of the day. Then at three o'clock after all of that's finished, I'll go to the gym. Special Forces soldier Ant Middleton goes to the gym about four times a week and he recommends that in his daily routine. I have decided to put it at about three o'clock because like I said earlier, my brain stops working so effectively at 12 o'clock and gradually gets worse to about three o'clock. This is when I find I have the most physical strength, but my brain power is at probably a minimum. After the gym, I'll crack 15 minutes worth of chores. Everybody's got to do chores. Then it's back to work. Now I'm not working that late. Uh, Benjamin Franklin and Winston Churchill, uh, lots of these other characters used to work really late into the evening. Then it's followed by social arrangements. I think this is really important and definitely overlooked by a lot of people. When I was reading about daily routines and about what people got up to, you kind of don't often see about social arrangements put into a daily routine. Oh, what do you want to say? I want to say that G Charles Dickens always made time for family and friends, so I'll definitely be doing the same thing. And if I'm not doing that and it's not taking up my entire evening, I'll be working on passion projects, uh, music and filmmaking that maybe doesn't make any money, but I just really enjoy doing it. Then after that, I'll relax. I'll either watch some Netflix or YouTube and learn to switch off just before bed. I often hear the expression that you need to mimic those who you look up to. So by building this daily routine, I am trying to mimic people uh, that I certainly look up to and that I admire. Now, after having done this a couple of times, I might need to make a few tweaks here and there, but mostly I think this is really good and it's definitely cleared my mind and helped me think straightforward about what comes where in the day and how I'm gonna strategically plan my day to put in things I enjoy and maybe not enjoy. I highly recommend that you try this out yourself and check out famous people's routines and start implementing some of their techniques into your own day. If you enjoy the video, you know, tap that like button to become a productivity guru. 
like your boy. Don't subscribe. See you next week.